Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. Today's vlog will make a little switch for you, and we're looking at a dairy operation. We're actually at the Trade Winds Dairy, where the Hyper team gave a lot of technical support, and we brought in one of our suppliers, Zinc Pro, who provides us with the greatest mineral source you can get across the world. So we're actually focusing on nutrition and hoof care. And we want to tell you a little bit about our project here at Trade Winds. We're actually introducing the girl Lando as that dairy breed of choice. It's a great opportunity for us now to see and evaluate how these animals do. And so far, they're doing great. The weight gains are amazing using the hyper feeding program. And we wanted to showcase these young heifers of girl Lando that will become milkers in the next, say, 18 months. And we also wanted to give you a little topic on nutrition, how is it that we plan to change the landscape of our TMR feeding program. And also a lot of information on calf care. They have a decent amount of fiber in them. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're typically pretty low uh, in potassium mm -hmm. and, um, and they're high in dry matter. What about sorghum? Sorghum is, it depends on what the dry matter is of it. Um, but sorghum is, if you can ensile it, sorghum silage is awesome. That's, that's the I aim. That's, your, your, your that's the aim. Yeah, yeah. Experience in, in Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, oh, well, my, my family has a farm in Costa Rica yeah. and we produce sorghum. Sorghum silage. Sorghum silage and corn silage. Yep. And personally, I like more corn silage. Yes. But, but sorghum is, is great. It's great, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for, I mean, if, if you ask me for fiber, I prefer sorghum. Yeah. For better balanced food, I prefer corn. The oh. citrus pulp that it makes in Costa Rica is dry. Yeah. yeah we we, we are trying. The, the, the tablet line. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. citrus pulp. That's citrus pulp. Yeah, and you have so much pellet. of that here. You have pellet here? No, no we, we, no. we are awesome. trying to we are trying to make some pellet here okay. with the pulp of the of the of the fruits. Yeah. Uh, I mean the pineapples and the and, yeah. the and the citrus that we have here. We are trying to, to find a machine who can dry it. Like yeah. just like Tico Fruit does, mm -hmm. yeah. and make an, our own fiber. Yeah. You know? That's good, man. Yeah, that's, that's very good. That's, that's the next sorghum. step there, man. That's the next yeah. step for them. Because I mean, sorghum yeah, silage is, is. Yeah, we're doing some drying for you them. You get away with either because your um, your citrus pulp has such a high energy content, yeah, right? It's correct. got such uh, fermentable but we, but It comes like 90% of water right now. That means they dry it. You gotta find a way to. Yeah, we, we're trying to do some drying for them. We have a facility out by, by Makuk Spin, that's JB, where we have like a ferment yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Air, yeah. Force air dryer, so which actually did the experiment. We got 15 or tons. The no, I just using conventional current. So we're trying to dry it down and then see if we can do like some pellets just to make them so that it can work. So yeah. they can probably make that investment into into the at drying dry. machine. Yeah, at least it, dry. At least dry it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they need to. Yeah, I, I grew up on a on a dairy in Wisconsin in um, the United States, and I mean every dairy in Wisconsin, right, is predominantly corn silage based. Mm. Well. It would have been about 2019. We had a we had a really wet spring, so corn got in late, and then the rain and the, well, actually the snow came really early in fall. So a lot of guys couldn't couldn't get the corn off in time. So a lot of them came back in then in the next spring and planted sorghum because they could ensile it and get it to the cows quicker for um for corn silage. Yeah, thing here is Milk production didn't change hardly at all going from corn silage. Don't think to don't think silage. Adam that here the, the rainy season is that long. Right? right, but all I'm saying is sorghum silage is a very good yeah, yeah, yeah. very good feature. Actually stuff. actually we 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 are right now purchasing some some sorghum from Costa Rica. Okay. And we're planting to we're planning to planting to plant in that soon. So okay. how many month. how many months of rain you have here? Uh, it varies enough. Yeah, but normally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, about yeah, about three than, four months in this year. Tropical um, countries. We have over the past two years experiencing some on and off, not regular rain patterns. Yeah, this this last. Two years have been weird in climate yeah. matters. So, it, look, I mean, Jamaica is an is an island. So, every hurricane that sits around brings water. So, so, so this machine is a bacteria meter, and it was actually uh, developed for for use for humans. So, all of the cheese plants, milk plants, meat plants in the U.S. use this, and so we use it for cats because. I've now been to 55 countries with Zinpro, and typically the biggest killer of calves globally is bacteria in feeding equipment. 
I've seen absolutely filthy situations that they've changed and they have completely reduced scours and completely gotten rid of their death loss. Um, it's, it's a really, it's a really big deal. So we need, uh, is that, that's the one that you're, they are using today? No? Yes, it's, clean. Yes, it's already clean? Yeah. Yes, already clean. So, all we're doing is seeing how, how good of a job we did cleaning. This thing is gonna uh, pick up bacteria, okay? We can use it for three types of surfaces. We can use it for um, stainless steel, plastic, and rubber. And for humans, the, it, this is gonna give you a number from zero to 40 million is the highest I've seen, which is really, 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 really bad. Um, but with human consumption, they typically like to see things less than 5,000. For calves, I'm typically, if I could be less than like 50,000, like that's pretty good, right? Because it's a barn, we're never gonna get it completely perfect. Um, but when we get to a certain point, you know, we're talking about replacing the equipment, you know, yeah. or updating protocols. Um, can somebody tell me what the two most important parts of a cleaning program are? What do you think the two most important steps in a cleaning program are? Rinsing first, and then removing Scrubbing? Scrubbing is probably the second most important step. You know what number one is? Drying. Drying. Oh, after you have scrubbed. After everything's done. If it yes. doesn't dry, you can't break the growth cycle of the bacteria. Yes. This is what I want. We need to dry a lot. Though. So typically what we do with these bottles is we'll just pound nails in that wall. And you can just hang them up on there and let them dry out. It's cheap and it works. they are not working in that area, so they just put them in the bottle. There's some different genetics. Yes, and we have a staff here that has a foot problem. A foot that An injury? Yes. Okay, how did that happen? Walking in the mud. Walking in the mud. Okay. Back, I think it's back here. Okay. Hmm. Um, but so the consistency of the weight is important. And so the reason we're talking about bacteria and all of that for the first two weeks is because our goal in the first 60 days with calves is to grow them as fast as we physically can because the first 60 days of life for the calf is the only time that their mammary gland or their udder is nutrient responsive so the faster the calf grows the faster the mammary gland grows and, develops. and develops and so that was actually most of my phd research was on that and so when we get calves to grow faster in the first 60 days we can get like 1,500 liters more milk in first lactation. So we're talking about things. About this health. Yeah, well, exactly. So the reason that happens is the mammary gland gets a little bit bigger, but also there's just more milk producing cells that grow. And so we're talking over there about the diet and the dry matter and the different ingredients. We're talking about keeping cows healthy uh, through you know hoof trimming reducing retained placentas, but not treating calves here and keeping them growing fast in the first 60 to 90 days, you're not gonna see that milk for two years, right, until those calves get yeah. get bigger, but you're 100% gonna see it. I mean, I've got farms I work with in Mexico, they're getting calves to grow in the first 60 days, one kilo a day. And those animals are now coming into first lactation, they're making over 2,000 liters more milk in first lactation than that lactation before. So there's focusing here, it can be frustrating because you don't see the results right away, yeah. but 100% makes a massive difference down the road. So that's my encouragement to you. That's why I'm gonna send you those results. Please, please, because um, that's yes. why we want you to use a colostrometer or a, a Brix refractometer. Consider mm -hmm. purchasing some colostrum powder for the calves when you don't have good colostrum. All of that impacts I growth I and all of that impacts your future production. And how, how, what's the number of, of bricks that you, you have to have in the, for, for colostrum? So I want to, if you're going to feed maternal colostrum, I want to see a bricks of 23% or more. Okay. Okay. If it's below 23%, um, it's not good to be fed alone. If we have a colostrum replacer, okay, 
If it's below 18 bricks, you're going to feed a 100% colostrum replacer. If it's between 18 and 23 bricks, we can add some colostrum powder to the maternal colostrum to increase the bricks. If the bricks is over 23, just feed it. It's good. You don't need to add it. And, and freeze, and freeze the, the colostrum meats is, is a good practice or is a bad practice? As long as you can freeze it quick. Yeah. Um, if you collect the colostrum and it sits in the parlor for four hours and then you freeze it, not good. <laughs> but if you can collect it and freeze it quickly, thaw it quickly, that, that, okay. that can work. But free, feeding fresh is better. Uh, is better because it will, I mean, pasteurized is best. But feeding fresh colostrum is better because it limits the opportunity for bacteria to grow. Mm. Um, so using a program that uses fresh colostrum and a colostrum mm -hmm. replacer is typically how we have the most success. Okay. Uh, like closer to 15 would be better, but 20 is okay. And it depends, yeah, right? If you, if, well, it depends on the machine and it depends, depends how much milk you're feeding them. If you're going to let them drink 12 liters a day, you can't do 20 calves because there's just not enough time for all the calves to get their 12 liters. It's just not possible. If it's eight liters, you could do 20 calves. Um, I was on a farm, though, two weeks ago that had 25 calves. The calves weren't doing very well. They were all alive. <laughs> but they weren't doing very well. But, I mean, so people will, will do more or less. But I would say target 20 calves to start um, as long as we're at, like, that eight liters of milk a day. When do you So I like to see calves. So when they get introduced... To the automatic calf feeder typically around five to seven days right you still house them individually for a few days make sure they have a good suckle and then when you transition them over i like to see them have you might ramp them up from like four to eight like and that might take three days once they get in there but then i want to see them at eight liters for like 40 days okay so 40 days and then start a weaning program so we're talking about 60 to 70 days on milk this is typically what i like to see now, I've seen people do 45 days on milk, and they're weaning the calves correctly. Calves look great. I'm dealing with a farm in New York right now that's feeding calves milk for 90 days. Way too long. ton of problems for those calves, and we're working through it. But, um, you know, that kind of that 60, so that's, you know, that 8 to 10 week range is kind of our sweet spot because that brings us back to mammary gland growth, right? Our calves going to grow faster on milk or starter? milk it's way more efficient right so you get more growth you get more mammary gland growth the best way to get more milk in first lactation is to feed them more milk in the first 60 days have you written 